friends, it's great to see you today. I'm so glad we get to spend some time together and I have a couple of fun things to share with you. Um, the first is that we're going to still talk about the wonderful continent of Africa. And I have a really special book that we'll read in a little bit titled, It Takes a Village. And this is a big sister and a little brother and we're going to read about how the big sister is caring for her little brother, but she has some help along the way. So we'll read this in a little bit. And I have kind of a fun game that I wanted to show you after the book that you can do at home with your family to practice different ways of talking about money and buying things. And we'll talk about it in a little bit. But first, I have a fun song for you. Now, in Africa, a lot of the fruits and vegetables and food and the goods that people use in their life are bought at big open markets, just like we have farmer's market at, um, and maybe in our city, do you have a farmer's market in your city? They have markets like that but that's almost always how they buy all of their goods. They might not have Target or a grocery store or a big clothing store to go buy things at. They go to a market to buy all of those things. And a market looks just like our farmer's market that we've been to where there are different booths and canopies and different people are selling, which means they're giving something they made or they grew in exchange for money that someone gives them. So when you go to the farmer's market, you might buy different things. And when you um, give the person who is selling them money, they give you something in return. So you're buying things. And in Africa, that's how a lot of their um, purchases are made in those markets. So. I have a fun game we'll talk about, but first let's sing a song about going to a market. And this song might be familiar to you because we've sung it before and it's called Sammy, I'm Glad to Be Me. So if you remember, you can sing along. I'm going to change a couple of the words and the movements to talk about African animals, but you can sing along because I think you know it. Are you ready? Okay. This is a song about Sammy. His father sent him out to buy bread. But Sammy didn't feel like walking. He wished he could run instead. So he said, if I were a cheetah, I would run to the store, run to the store, run to the store. If I were a cheetah, I would run to the store run to the store for my father. Very good, did you guys run? Okay, let's do the next one. This is a song about Sammy. His father sent him out to buy bread, but Sammy didn't feel like walking. He wished he could gallop instead. So he said, if I were a zebra, I would gallop to the store, gallop to the store, gallop to the store. If I were a zebra, I would gallop to the store, gallop to the store for my father. Very nice, did you gallop? Okay, let's do the last one. This is a song about Sammy. His father sent him out to buy bread, but Sammy didn't feel like walking. He wished he could swing instead, so he said, if I were a monkey, I would swing to the store, swing to the store, swing to the store. If I were a monkey, I would swing to the store, swing to the store for my father. Did you guys swing? Very nice. But then Sammy remembered about the loaf of bread and he knew he had to move along. And as he walked, he smiled and thought, he made up a brand new song. So he said, I'm glad I'm me and I'm walking to the store, walking to the store, 
walking to the store. I'm glad I'm me and I'm walking to the store, walking to the store for my father. Very nice. Do you guys remember doing that one? We do lots of different animals when we play at school and you can do lots of animals too. You can fly or swim or tiptoe depending on what animal you're representing and what movement you want to do. Thanks for singing with me. Let's go ahead and read our book and after we can talk about how you can make your own market at home. So our book today is titled, It Takes a Village by Jane Cohen Fletcher. Now, remember, this book is about a big sister caring about her little brother and making sure that he's safe. Let's see what happens. It takes a village. The sun was just beginning to climb into the sky, but the villagers had been up for hours. It was market day. Yummy, mommy said. You must take care of your little brother today while we're at the market. I will be too busy selling our mangoes. So this family grows mangoes to sell at the market. So they give mangoes to anyone who wants to buy them. And that's how they make money and how people get mangoes. Come Koku, Yemi said. I will watch you today all by myself. All by yourself, Mama asked and smiled at what Yemi said. Mama knew better. Mama picked up her mangoes She's holding them on her head. Yemi picked up Koku. She felt very grown up as she walked out of the family compound beside Mama. They joined the stream of people walking into the village. People came from all around to sell their goods and buy whatever they needed. Market day was also a time for visiting. When you go to the farmer's market, do you ever see somebody that you know and you can say hello and talk to them? That's what they like to do. See their open markets, their different tents. Everybody's coming to get ready to sell what they have made or grown to somebody else who might need it. Then the greetings started the moment they stepped on the paths into town. Hello, how are you? How is your family? They all say. Yemi helped Mama set out their mangoes. One of the other fruit vendors said, Yemi is such a big girl now. She is a lot of help to you. Yes, said Mama. She is going to watch Koku today for me. All by myself, Yemi added. All by yourself? Yay, gay, the women marveled. They smiled and nodded, but they knew better too. What do you think they know? Mama said she knew better. The other women said they knew better. Hmm. When the mangoes were all neat in piles, Yemi asked if she and Koku could take a look around the market. Mama said, yes, but don't be gone too long. Mama's setting out the mangoes. The other people are getting all of their beautiful items ready and Koku and Yemi are headed off to explore. Yemi had not walked very far when Koku became restless. He must be hungry, she thought, so she set him down for just one moment so she could buy some peanuts. See how this woman is, buy is selling peanuts? But Koku wandered off. Koo! Yemi cried when she turned around and discovered that Koku was gone. She put the peanuts in her pocket and she hurried off to find him. She must feel a little nervous about where her brother went, huh? Let's see if she can find him. Where could he have gone? She said. As Yemi searched for him, she began to worry. Koku must be hungry. But he was not. Is someone feeding him? Koku must be thirsty, Yemi thought, but he was not. Someone gave him something to drink. Koku 
Ooh, must be frightened, she thought. She's looking in this big, beautiful pot. But he was not. He was not frightened. Koku must be hot, but he was not. She's letting him splash around in a big pool of water. Koku must be tired. She's looking all around, but he was not. These kind people were letting him nap on their mats. Finally, after searching everywhere, Yemi stopped and cried aloud, Koku must be lost. But he was not. Just across the path where Yemi stood, Koku was waking up. Is this your Koku? The mat vendor asked. So these are the mats he's selling. So he's called a vendor. Can you say vendor? Vendor. He sells these mats and he let Koku sleep on one. Yes, exclaimed Yemi as she scooped up her brother. Thank you so much for taking care of him, Yemi said to the mat vendor. Oh, he chuckled. I am not the only one. He pointed to where Koku had come from. Yemi thanked him again and she headed off in that direction. What do you think she's going to go do? She said thank you to this man. Let's see. She said thank you again for giving him a bath. Thank you again for keeping him busy. Thank you again for giving him a drink of water and again for giving him something to eat. We've been gone a long time, Koku, Yemi said. Mama must be worried, but she was not. Mama knew better. As my mama told me and her mama told her, I will tell you. You were not alone today, Yemi. We don't raise our children by ourselves. It takes a village to raise a child. So they are safe back with mama, but they were always safe because everyone in the village, all of the vendors were always taking care of Yemi and Koku. Isn't that wonderful? Do you have a neighborhood like that or some families and friends who like to take care of you? You do. I'm glad. It's wonderful to be part of a big community like that who always will love you and care for you and make sure you are safe. Well, I talked to you about a fun activity you can do at home that has to do with being a vendor in a market. So I have some things that you, I bet, have at your house too. I have a basket of beautiful fruits and vegetables that you might find at your farmer's market or at the grocery store if you needed to go and buy something um, to eat for your home. So I have a pepper, an onion, an avocado, an orange, and an apple. So we can pretend and you can pretend at home that you are at a market and you're going to buy something. You can take a chalkboard or even a piece of paper or a cardboard box and you can write prices. That means how much money each thing costs and make a list. So I wrote one onion is $4 and to write $4, we write like this. To write a dollar sign, we write a big S with a line through it. That's called the dollar sign. I bet you could practice that. And the onion is $4, so I'm going to write the number four. And to show that there are no coins, no cents after the four, we do a dot and a zero, zero. That says four dollars. Now, if I wanted four dollars and two quarters with it, which would be four dollars and fifty cents, I would write this number with a five and a zero to represent fifty cents. So you can write however much you want to charge for each 
of your beautiful items. Now, you can practice being the seller, the person who has the items to give to somebody who wants to buy them. And you would say, hello, it's nice to see you. Would you like an apple? Or you could practice being the buyer and you could say, hi, it's nice to see you. I'm looking for an apple. How much is your apple? Could you practice that? You could. And then you could look and you could say, hmm, an apple is $2. And you would pretend to give them $2. You could practice with your own money that you make with a cut out piece of paper and a two written on it. And you would know that's $2 to give to somebody. Or you could practice with real money if mom and dad say that's okay, as long as you give it back and keep it safe. And you can practice buying different things. You could set up a store with toys, or you could set up um, a store with things that you've made, like beautiful artwork, and that would be more like a gallery. You could set up plates and cups and spoons, or you could set up pillows and blankets and stuffed animals. Anything that you would like to have at your store, you can practice and you need a buyer, somebody who wants to give money for something in return, or you could practice being the seller, someone who wants to give an item for money in return. I cannot wait to hear about all the fun markets that you are going to make. And in our book, Just Like Koku, it discovered no matter where he went, there were so many different things that you could buy and he was able to have different things like a sleeping mat or a drink of water to help him be safe and happy. Thank you for reading with me today. It was fun singing about our Sammy song and reading our sweet book and talking about how you can create your own market at home and be a vendor. I'll see you next time. Bye friends.